Birth control pills are one of the most commonly used forms of contraception in the United States. Today, women in the U.S. can only access monthly birth control pills through a prescription. But that could change within the next year. In July, a French pharmaceutical company submitted an application to the Food and Drug Administration for approval of what could be the first non-emergency over-the-counter birth control pill in the U.S. So how does this over-the-counter option compare to other contraception methods? And if the pill is approved, how would that change access to reproductive care across the country? First, we need to break down what's in these pills. Combination and progestin-only pills are the two main types of hormonal birth control pills that women can access through a prescription. The pill the FDA is considering for over-the-counter use is a progestin-only pill, which would be marketed under the name Opil. It's not a brand new product. There is experience with using it. Dr. Carolyn Westhoff, an OBGYN at Columbia University, who has been researching contraception for decades, says the pill could be used by most women. Combination pills, which contain both estrogen and progestin, are more commonly used than progestin-only pills. One big reason for that is that the bleeding pattern with combination pills is more predictable. Progestin-only pills generally come in 28-day packs. People typically experience one of three bleeding patterns, no bleeding at all, regular bleeding, or unpredictable bleeding. And it's difficult to determine which one a person might experience that irregularity might be annoying, but it's not medically dangerous. Combination pills, on the other hand, are typically taken on a cyclic method of three weeks on a hormone-containing pill and one week on an inactive pill, which is when menstruation would occur. Progestin-only pills also require patients to be more vigilant about when they take their daily dose. That's because of how quickly the hormone is typically metabolized in the body. Progestin prevents ovulation and works to thicken the cervical mucus, which helps prevent sperm from reaching an egg. Taking a dose late could leave the mucus lining thin enough for sperm to get through, impacting the pill's effectiveness against preventing pregnancy. But the type of progestin in the O-pill lasts a little longer. That leads to more stable blood levels and a little bit more forgiveness if a woman takes her pill late. Combination pills are even more forgiving, so it matters less whether the pills are taken at the same time each day. Potential side effects set the progestin pills apart from combination pills, because combination pills have more of what doctors call contraindications, which are conditions they consider a reason not to take a certain medication or treatment due to potential harm. The reason that this application for this pill looks very appealing is that most of the contraindications for using birth control pills really relate to the estrogen component. And this pill does not have estrogen, so it means that it is suitable for almost every woman to use. Birth control pills that contain estrogen can increase the risk of developing blood clots in some women. Between 3 and 9 in every 10,000 users of combination birth control pills experience a blood clot in a given year. If the pill is approved by the FDA, that could make it easier for some to access contraceptives. Given what's going on with the overturning of Roe v. Wade with the Dobbs decision, we expect that more clinics might not be able to continue providing services. That's Laurie Sobel, the Associate Director of the Women's Health Policy Team at the Kaiser Family Foundation. She said the change to over-the-counter birth control would make a big difference, especially for those who don't have access to health care, either virtually or in person. The folks that have insurance right now would be making a deliberate choice to go from having something that's covered at 100% with no cost sharing to them to something in which they may need to pay out of pocket. She said consumer choices would likely depend on weighing cost versus convenience, but the price won't be set unless the drug is approved, which could take months. Other manufacturers are waiting on the sidelines to see exactly how this gets implemented and then might line up at the FDA for other methods to go over the counter. 